Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today I'm going to be doing a video talking about the differences of an electrolysis tank and a lye tank. And I'm going to be doing that coming right up. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has purchased my product, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. The purchase of this product helps keep this channel going, and I just want to say thank you so very much. So let's get on into the video. One of the biggest questions that I get all of the time is, if you had to choose between an electrolysis tank or a lye tank, which one would you choose? Hopefully I'll be able to answer that question, and you'll be able to answer that question for yourself before this video is over. And also, at the end of this video, I will leave lots of pictures of lye tanks and electrolysis tanks. So you can kind of get the gist of different methods and different ways people have put them together. I would also suggest check out the electrolysis tank builders on Facebook. They are a great group in there with a lot of knowledge. I would say this first, before you go in there and start asking a lot of questions, look at a lot of the posts, look at the pictures, read the files, Get a general idea, that way you're not going to be asking questions that could be easily answered by reading some posts that have already been made. So check that group out. I'll leave a link to it in the video description below. Electrolysis Tank Builders on Facebook. An uh, electrolysis tank consists of several components. Number one, you'll need a reservoir tank. That could be a plastic container, a 55 gallon drum, a 20 gallon foot tote, a 30 gallon foot tote, I personally have a stainless steel tank that works as not just a tank, but also the sacrificial anode. The next thing, like I said, a sacrificial anode of some kind. A lot of people will use rebars. There are a lot of different types of sacrificial anodes that you can use. I've seen people use rebar. I've even seen people take in a 55 gallon drum, they'll bend the rebar where it snakes all the way through to the top of the tank. That way, all of them are connected, so they don't have to go through the whole thing about wiring them all together. It is one continuous unit. That is pretty neat, and it works really well. But if you don't have the ability to bend the, the piece of rebar, you can take four, five, or six pieces of rebar and stand them inside your tank, and then just link them all together with a wire and some clamps. I have also seen people take a keg split it in half and put one side of the keg on one side and the other on the other and it just be separated enough just so the iron will fit down in there without touching or making contact. I've seen people use strips of stainless steel. I've seen people use all kinds of iron, uh, all kinds of steel. I will say this, I can't think of the name of it. It's a hexavalent gas that is put off when you use stainless steel you're not going to be putting out enough power or temperature for this to occur. And even if you were able to cause this kind of gas to be released by the process, it would take a lifetime of your personal tank to build up enough of that chemical to cause you an issue. Stainless steel works great because it cleans up so much easier than some of the other irons and sacrificial metals that you might use for your sacrificial anode. The third component of an electrolysis tank is an electrolyte solution. Nearly everyone uses super washing soda. It's made by Arm & Hammer. You can find it at most of your stores, Walmart, some of your big box stores. You can find it online. You can also get it at Amazon. I'll leave a link to the super washing soda on Amazon in the video description below. The ratio will be one cup per 10 gallons. Now, if you exceed that, you're going to make your battery charger or power supply work harder than it should. And just to remind you as well, as you have evaporation, your water is what's evaporating, not your electrolyte. So if you replace water, don't keep adding electrolyte because you will get a stronger solution and it will make your battery charger work too hard and cause it to fail eventually. So you want to keep that ratio pretty much the same. So if you lose water through evaporation, just add water back in because your electrolyte is not going to evaporate. It's still going to be there. Now let's get to the battery charger or the power supply. Now there is a real shortage of manual battery chargers. 
Now, a manual battery charger is what you need for an electrolysis tank. You can't just go out and buy them anymore. Everything is automatic. Now, you may find some used at a yard sale or an estate sale or a flea market. And if you do, you snag it because it is well worth the money when you can get one. I have been seeing a, a lot of people use power supplies. They're using a DC power supply, and it's not a lot of amps, but it's working great. But I know people that are running 5 and 6, 10 amps, and they're coming up with great success. You can also run two battery chargers in tandem, but the chances are both of them working on the same circuit is kind of slim. You'll need to put them on separate breakers or separate fuses so they don't trip or blow a fuse. You can also use one battery charger for two tanks. A lot of people do that, and that'll work just fine. Just make sure you don't overdo your electrolyte solution and cause that thing to work harder than it should. I've also seen people take fans and put them on their power supply or their battery chargers. I've even seen them put them in a drum and put the fan at the end of the drum so all of that air will be pushed right over across the top of their power supply to keep it cool. There's a lot of different rigs out there. Check out all the pictures on Electrolysis Tank Builders on Facebook. You'll be surprised. There is a lot of ingenuity involved. There's another part to the electrolysis tank that's very important, and that is your suspension system. Now you have your tank and your sacrificial anodes, and your tank is full with your electrolyte solution. Now you need a way to suspend your cast iron down into the tank without it touching any of the sacrificial anodes. Because if you touch one of the anodes, you're going to have an arc. Very possibly could, could put a mark on your cast iron. Very possibly could blow a fuse. Could burn up your battery charger. So you want to make sure that piece of cast iron is suspended inside your solution far enough away from your sacrificial anodes, also close enough to get a good effect. Uh, I would suggest using something that does not conduct electricity, maybe some kind of wood or plastic. I was using a wood 2x2 uh, two two with a stainless steel screw thread screwed down through the middle of it with a hook on the end of it and I would just hook my black battery lead to the stainless steel rod and hang my cast iron onto that hook and then I'd hook my red lead which is the positive onto my sacrificial anodes and that would be what I needed to fill the circuit. So you want to make sure that you use something like stainless steel. You don't want to use anything that's galvanized. Anything that will put off a chemical that you don't want. You know, galvanized is a big no-no. So stainless steel is a great choice. I purchased my stainless steel all thread at Ace Hardware. And you can find those online too. It would be a safe bet to go ahead and go with stainless steel. Okay, now let's talk about the lie tank. A lie tank is much less complicated than an electrolysis tank. You basically have a plastic tub or a tank of some kind. I have a stainless steel tank that I purchased on Amazon. I'll leave a link to it in the video description as well. And it's got a lid. That way I can keep it covered and I can put something on it. And I can even heat that thing up and get it really warm and it works a lot better. First of all, you have your tank. It can be a 55 gallon drum, it can be a 10 gallon foot tub, it can be a 5 gallon bucket. Now I will say this, a number 8 won't fit down in a 5 gallon bucket, usually number 7 and below. Now you might be able to squeeze it in and kind of stretch it out a little bit, but I have used a 5 gallon lie tank in the past just as a demonstration. But you can use any kind of foot tub, I would suggest use something that you can put a lid on it. That way, when you're not out there with it, you can cover it up and keep critters out and make sure no kids can get near it. Number two, you want to use 100% lye, and it's preferably to be granulated. You'll use one pound per five gallons of water, and you make sure that you always fill it with water first and then add your lye. Now, if you pour your lye in first and then start adding water, you're going to have a reaction and you may have some problems and you'll sprinkle it around and after that you'll stir it with some kind of stir stick. If you've never used a lye before, go ahead and use some rubber gloves and some safety glasses or goggles just to be safe, especially your first time using it. And I will say one more thing about the lye tank. Temperature does play a big part. Temperature, if the temperature is very low, it will just quit working altogether. 
around 50 degrees or so, the activity just ceases altogether. When it gets up around 60, it starts working a little bit. At around 70 and 80, it starts working really well. And if you can get it up there around 90 degrees, it works great. Okay, now that we've talked about both of them, I'm going to talk about the differences and what you can expect from each one. On one hand, electrolysis will remove everything. On the other hand, a lye bath will only remove the organics. You have to do a second step in another method to get rid of the rust. So, in my opinion, an electrolysis tank is far superior than just a plain lye tank. Now, the plus to a lye tank versus electrolysis, there is less engineering involved, less mechanics involved, and you only have one footprint, your single tank. Now, if you have an electrolysis tank, you have the tank and your battery charger or your power supply. So you're taking up twice the space for the method. So I'll answer the question. If you had a choice, which system would you rather have? For me, I would rather have an electrolysis tank. I can tell you a single electrolysis tank will not do the job very quickly. So I use both. I use my light tank to put a lot of pieces in there while they're waiting their turn for the electrolysis tank. And then by the time some of those pieces get ready to go into the electrolysis tank, all of the organic material has been removed and all I'm having to deal with is rust. So that cuts down a lot. So now I'm dealing with three footprints. I have the electrolysis tank, my power supply, and also my lye tank. So if you have room for both and also possess a little bit of mechanical ability to put them together, I would suggest go ahead and go both. That's what I do and it's the very best method. There is one more factor that I haven't talked about yet and that is disposing of your liquid from your lye tank or your electrolysis tank when you're done with it. Uh, when it comes to your lye tank, it's basically the same thing as drain cleaner. You can pour it down your drain. I would suggest pour it down your toilet because you may stain your sink. But I usually don't dispose of my lye water unless I'm planning on moving my tank to a different location. And your water from your electrolysis tank, when you dispose of it, it's pretty much the same thing except for it being a drain cleaner. It's basically soapy water. And you have some particles from the old seasoning that was broke off. You may even have some paint involved, different oils, maybe some iron oxide from the rust. So I would suggest to pour that in a place where maybe you'd want to kill some weeds. So I'm going to go ahead and leave a bunch of pictures of the electrolysis tanks and lye tanks that people have sent me. So just look at the different types and methods on how they put them together and hopefully you'll get an idea of what you want to do for your personal lye tank or electrolysis tank or maybe even both. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell and I promise I will keep more of them coming. You can also follow Cast Iron Cookware on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out the Cast Iron Cookware Facebook group. I will leave a link to all of these sites below and also the things that we talked about, the Facebook group. I will leave Amazon links to all the items that I mentioned in this video. And I just want to say thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I just want to share something with you really quickly. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I just want to say, share the word and be a blessing.